Hi everyone, John here. Let's talk about my Model 3. This is the review on my Tesla Model 3. I got it in August and I just took it to a family farm here and I just wanna go ahead and give it a good review. We just took it on a trip that took about five and a half hours and we stopped at a supercharger. The Tesla Model 3 this one is the rear wheel drive, goes zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds. Is it American? It is an American company based out of Fremont, California. So is it got an engine in it? A gasoline powered or diesel powered engine also? No, it does not. It's pure electric. So there's all batteries at, at the bottom. There's Where, only one engine here? in the back between the wheels. Yeah. And, and the electric motors back here? Yep. Now where's yep. your hood? So this is trunk space right here? Yeah, so so this is the uh, this is there's trunk space in here. There's trunk space. It's called a frunk in the front. And look at that. So this is the front trunk, which is called the frunk. And what's really nice is you've got you've got a lot of room in here. It's not a lot. It's shallow, but it's enough room to put some shopping bags. And these are bag hooks that you can just kind of lift up and put you know a couple of shopping bags so they won't slide around. And you also have a little light inside that you can go ahead and uh, you know illuminate. And you also have a release, so if somebody went in there, you can if they can get out. So also right here, there's no fluids in the car. The only thing it has is washer fluid and brake fluid. Is so here's the washer fluid, and this is for emergency release yeah, for in case the uh, in case you're in an accident yeah. the uh, the fireman can just cut a line in there and it'll be safe to get anyone out in case there is an accident this okay. this goes down and just put put your hand on the yeah. other side you just you know and just put it down and it shuts just like that go down here what's really cool is the power so you got like zero to 60 you ever been on a roller coaster several Oh. Woo! <laughs> it's like that never gets old. No, man. How does that feel? Like you're doing a freaking roller coaster. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and so it's got a wide open view all yeah. the way around. And what's really cool is, is that even if you're going from a, it's really good at, at from 20 on. So yeah. even if you, even if you're just going about. It's doing regenerative braking right now. So as you slow down, it does regenerative braking. So I mean, we're, we're going about 20 miles. What so, do you mean? so what happens is as you slow down, it will recharge the engine. And you see this line goes green. Yeah. So as I slow down, I let off the gas. It mm -hmm. starts charging the battery as the I'm motion. slowing down. The motion. Yeah. So now we're doing this. And I do that. I mean, it actually throws you back in the seat. Yeah, it's amazing. That's where the air conditioner comes out. That's where out. the air conditioner comes out. It's just coming out of that vent right there. This little thing right yeah. here? Yeah, but look, oh, yeah. you could just touch it, and I'm moving it directly I can to feel you. It. You feel it go directly yeah, where you want it to go. Is that amazing? Oh, so I have it right in your, yeah. right to you now. Okay. I'm filming you right now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so you just put it back down in the drive, and... And then it Just goes auto, it auto you. holds automatically. Okay. So then you're. So that's essentially what mine does. Yeah. And then you can just go and then. That is a nice And you're just driving it just like acceleration. a. Acceleration. Yeah. And if you just, uh, you can do whatever you like. Are you sure? <laughs> well, as long as Well, that you, really does. It's, that's, that you really feel it. pushes you back. It pushes yeah. you back. It's wild. It, that never gets old. That, ne <laughs> that, that never gets old. I don't know. And it's just like it just feels like a I don't know a roller coaster. Tiny. Little it's all positive. Wheel. Yeah, it's a little steering wheel, but it's got it's a it's a grippy steering like kind of meaty. Boy, it really does slow down when you take your foot off the brake, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So go down to like under twenty and then hit it. You're like, man. And then it puts you back. <laughs> That's like crazy. That is crazy acceleration. What a tight one. steering too. Yeah, it really is. It's very tight, very like responsive. So one little touch, you you, you really yeah, feel it. You really do. You that really take, feel it. And I mean the the Audi's responsive, but not nearly like this one is as far as steering goes. Gosh. Okay, tell me again what makes it slow down so much. So so what it's doing, it's regenerating. So that's a regen, and you see right here, it goes green when you let off right. the gas. 
And so what that's doing is putting electricity back into the to the back it's using the, the centrifugal okay. force forward to regenerate power back into the battery. Okay. That's yeah. Cool. Gosh, yeah, you don't hardly need your brakes, do you? Yeah, you don't need your brakes. Okay, so there's two ways to unlock the car. One is from the key card right here, which uses the B pillar to open, and one is from the phone. I always use the phone, which actually works really well, but the B pillar is really easy. All you do is touch it right here, and it will lock, or it will open. So just do that. You get two beeps to open, and one beep to lock. Just do that, and then the mirror will shut. The handle works really well. All you do is press in, and the lever's out. All you do is touch this, and we'll open right up. So charging of the test is pretty easy. It looks like this. And you're gonna use a plug just like this. And this is for level two charging. This will get you charged up pretty quickly within three to five hours a night and no problem. So I'm using that, but there is an adapter for level one charging, which is your regular 110 outlet. So if you go ahead and use that, you're gonna get about 50 miles of range over an eight hour period. So that's really not your ideal situation. Of course, plugging in, you're going to use the adapter, and it's got the Tesla adapter just like that. And that's standard between all Tesla chargers. So when you're out and about and you're connecting into a charge point, you're going to use an adapter just like this. And this will plug right into that universal charge point adapter and plug right into your Tesla and have no problem charging. When you want to go ahead and start charging the car, you're gonna get your Tesla wall charger. I'm using the one that came with the car. And if you just press the button, it should open right up. And you can just go ahead and plug it in. It will lock. Once you plug it in, it'll turn green. And you see it flashing green. It's locked in there right now. There's a little Easter egg here. If you press it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it starts flashing different colors. Still charges, but it's just a little Easter egg there. We've got the 15 inch monitor here. So if you want to skip forward a few minutes, if you've already seen this, you can, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about these items. So right now you got the Bluetooth options to change your Bluetooth on your, on your phone. This is using AT&T LTE. So just want to let you know that it uses AT&T LTE. The cost for the LTE in the car is a hundred dollars a year and that's charged yearly, but your first year is free. Uh, right here, you've got your home link, so you can go ahead and and set this so that when you use Summon, you can open your garage door, or when you get home, you can use your uh, garage door. When using Summon, you can have it open the garage door and pull the car out for you. It's really cool. I haven't used it because I don't have a garage door at home. Right here is your, your dash cam, so if you press that, it's downloading the last 10 minutes of the dash cam footage, which is really super cool. Uh, so there is a dash cam. It's using the front-facing camera to use the dash, and that's really helpful when you're, uh, uh, you know, you witness something or there's something you want to uh, look back on that you uh, that that you had seen on the road. So it will record the last 10 minutes. This feature is going to get more robust as we move forward, but for right now, the dash cam is pretty much just the front camera, and it works pretty well. So right here, I have my. Uh, two settings, my wife's and mine, uh, and valet mode. So, so right now it's set for me, but when my wife gets in the car, she can go ahead and, and hit that, switch to her setting, and it will change to all the seats and side mirrors will all move to her settings. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that on that. You can use valet mode. So what valet mode does is go ahead and you see a switch to valet. This means that it locks the, the uh, glove box and the trunk from opening. So you're not allowed, uh, the person traveling in the car will not have access to those items. It will, you can also adjust valet mode with the speed. So you can make sure that the valet can't go above a certain speed if they're trying to uh, play with your car when you're gone. So that's really good. And you have a code to put in if you wanna shut off valet mode and that way they you know, they can't shut that off as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back to me. Okay, so the Tesla T. So once you see this, you're gonna see what version you're on, you're gonna see your mileage, you're gonna get release notes. It also has some Easter eggs, which you have a writing pad, which you can just write, you can save, and you could, this is just a little fun little notepad thing you can do. Um, you have more cowbell, and you've got uh, 
you know, emissions mode, which I, in another video, I have talk about emissions mode. It's just kind of a fun thing to play with, uh, with people. And, uh, and this one's Santa mode, which will turn your car into a Santa Claus. And you could, you could do that. This is just changes your, your map to, uh, to the map of Mars. Uh, release notes are kind of neat. Um, what's nice about Tesla is they publish all the release notes in a PDF format and you can access them when the car is parked. And we'll tell you all about how to use all the features in the car and it's really super powerful. Um, you also get your owner's manual. So the owner's manual is really good. So you used to get that big book. Now it's all in PDF format. You can get all the information on running your car right from here. What's really nice is you get the temperature right there. You get the time. Uh, you can lock and unlock the car. If you go ahead and uh, look at, uh, you can look at all your uh, navigation through here. You also have access to, from this side, you can look at your charging. You can see your charging state right from here. And if you press on your range, you'll see the duration of your car as well. So what's really nice about this is you can see the motor of the car and how it mines rear wheel drive. I got the long range battery and you could see the state of charge and just the certain electronics. Now this changes with the wheel configuration you have. If you have, let's say a, um, the 18 inch wheels versus the 19 inch wheels, I have the 19 inch wheels, it will show the color of your car and also the wheel configuration of your car. So that is really, really great. Um, right here, you have the name of the car. You can open the frunk and the trunk right from here. Uh, you can open open and, uh, and shut your uh, charging port. So right down here, you'll see that you've got a rear view camera, you've got your charging, and you've got a voice uh, mic button. So this is great for when you wanna navigate to somewhere, you can say, where's the local Starbucks? Go ahead and hit that button. So you have cards. So the first one that you see here, if you press that, is your auto wipers so you can change the speed of those you can also leave them at auto and if you swipe right then you'll, you're going to get your tire pressure i don't have it on right now so you're not seeing it you can also swipe the other way and you're going to get your trip meters uh your odometer and things of that nature let's press on car mode and well this will give you all the settings that are in your car which is really quite nice so quick controls are just controlling your exterior lights your side mirrors um, you can tell it when to uh, when to change those, and it's just kind of just your basic settings of your of your car. Uh, lights will keep your headlights on auto, so you want to make sure that you leave that on auto, so that they'll just go on and off. I leave the front fog lights on. Uh, dome lights are on auto. Ambient lights. Uh, you can go auto high beam, which of course I have on because if you're traveling uh, some dark roads, you want auto high beam. Um, headlights after exit is really nice. So if you lock your car, it'll leave the headlights on. Some people like that. I shut that off. Uh, steering wheel lights, I leave that on. Okay, locks. This is just basically your your key cards and things like that. Display. Display mode is auto. I leave everything uh, pretty much um, this the same way. And you can change to kilometers and miles. You can change your distance or energy use. So if you want to display energy, It'll do 80%, so I'm 80% charged there. If I want to do distance, I, I like distance. So I don't prefer that. I like it to auto hold for me, so I leave creep off, but some people like creep. Okay, slip start is something that you'd use for rain, sleet, or snow when you're stuck in mud. So I haven't used that, but I'm glad it's there. Autopilot. So we've got cruise follow distance. I leave it at four. I like to have a distance of four cars in front of me at all times. And auto steer, I like to have on. I like to auto steer. Navigate on autopilot. This is something just new that just came out. Um, so what that will enable you to do is when it's taking an exit, it will it will automatically put, put the turn signal on, take the exit for you, and slow down as it gets through that exit. It doesn't it it doesn't go through the exit fully. It's not full autonomous yet, but it's getting better every day. So. Currently, I have that on, so it's great for the highways when you're taking an exit. You won't miss your exit using that. So with Summon Beta, you can actually customize Summon to use Homelink, get at, open your garage door at home, pull out of your garage, unlock itself, and it'll be ready just in your driveway. I haven't used this feature uh, with Homelink because I don't, have, I don't use Homelink, but it's a really great feature. A lot of people use it with the S and the X, so uh, it's amazing. That is really a great feature. 
So navigation, your typical navigation uh, settings, avoid tolls, ferries, things like that. You, you've got a lot of uh, the same settings you would at anything. It is using Google Maps on navigation, which is really, I find the best, so I'm really happy about that. Safety and security is really uh, great because you can sit there and set the uh, speed that you want to a max speed you want on the car uh, that's good for uh, some people like to have that so you can park assist chimes I have security alarm on so what security alarm does is when you lock the vehicle it will honk the horn and that is something that people were uh, asking for and so it's really nice that when you lock the car you don't have to turn around you just hear it go off and you know your your car is locked uh, of course allow mobile access and service service uh, so anyway, I will tell you if, you're, if your wiper needs service, you can adjust the headlights, towing, factory reset, and things like that. Music is really great, so you have a lot of services that you can go to. So essentially, radio is just the regular radio on the, uh, for FM. So streaming radio is using Slacker radio. Now, if you haven't used Slacker, it's very, um, it's, it's, some people like it, some people don't. I don't mind it. I particularly use Apple Music and I stream everything from my phone, but it is nice sometimes just to go with what's included in the car, which is the streaming radio. I like to listen to like Today's Hits, As Jazz, and my wife likes Drive By Truckers. So we listen to those kind of radio stations. You can switch to your phone and it will connect to the particular phone that you're listening to. Uh, TuneIn is TuneIn Digital Radio, so you can get all the radio AM and FM stations on TuneIn. Um, very, very good. And you, of course, have search features so you can search for any music that you want. Um, if you want to control the volume, you can just turn the volume up on your steering wheel. So if you just use one of the knobs, you can skip a station by pushing this over or pushing it back, you can skip a station. So let's talk about oh, some other features. So we have a calendar. So if you want to look at your calendar, you can do that. If you want to look at energy usage, this will tell you your projected based on your current driving. This will tell you how you're doing with driving. So this is uh, really good for your projected range when you're driving and seeing how far you're really going to get uh, based on your current driving. If I'm driving 45 miles an hour, I might get 310 miles, but if I'm driving 80 miles an hour down the road, down the highway, I might not get my 310 miles and it's good to pull that up and know. So of course you have a web browser, you can just go to uh, uh, pull up any anything on the web browser. You can only use the web browser when you're parked uh, or charging. Uh, camera, of course, uses your rear view camera. Uh, charging, of course, pulls up your charging information. So that is really good. Now it says Ahoy on the phone. That's like an old time phone. That used to, used to be what they said when they first, uh, when the first phone was ever used was Ahoy. So that's pretty neat. If you want to adjust the heating uh, seats and everything, you could do that right here. So the air conditioning is really very nice. Um, you can go ahead and control the vents just by touching right here and the animation is so nice when you do this. So you can you have an XY axis and you can control the vent. The vent is going all the way across this entire dash. This is all you have with the car. This is all minimal. All you have is this vent going all the way across. Now there's two turbine vents in here that you can adjust for each one can adjust by itself. And if you click here, you've got heated seats. So you can turn on a heated seat from here. You can even turn on the center heated seat. I've never seen any car have a rear center heated seat. So the first car I've ever seen that has that. And you can control them from there and turn them down three ways. So that's really nice. Now with the Model 3, you cannot turn on the steering wheel heater. Uh, only the S and the X have that. Uh, you can also switch to, um, if you want to turn sync on, you can, you can sync the two uh, temperatures. Uh, of course, you can control your heated seats. This is your rear, this is your front front defrost, defrost and cool, front defrost and heat, and you can shut that off. So this is your rear defrost and mirrors, right there, and of course your volume up for your radio. So that is uh, amazing there. So with the steering wheel, you've got You've got your two nubs, and they control many, many things, and these are configurable to what you're on in the car. Let's talk about the cameras in the car. So there are eight cameras all the way around the car and 12 ultrasonic sensors. The cameras, three of them are located right in this front panel with the amb ambient light sensor. That's a long range, short range, and medium range camera along with an ambient light sensor, but there are two cameras on the side of the car, one in the B pillar and one in the side fender right here so we have two on the sides so that makes four we have three up front 
that's seven. We have one rear facing camera at the license plate. And we also have another camera that's inside the car facing in. That's a ninth there. Not all of them are being used in that front one. That one inside the cabin supposedly is not being used right now. Now there are 12 ultrasonic sensors and one has a long range radar, which I believe is one of these front sensors. And what that does, it cuts through fog, rain, sleet, and snow. Okay, so I have the 19 inch Continental tires that come with this. These are the medium upgraded tires. You can go up to 20 inch tires. So these are the 19s, they're Continentals. I believe the 20s are Continentals as well. And the 18s are Michelins. Now what makes these tires really interesting is the fact that all the tires have foam on the inside. So what that is, it's called acoustic foam. When you and I'll try to link to a video on this, but when you cut the, if you cut the tire open inside, there's tire, there's foam, acoustic foam in there, and that quiets the ride when you're driving. Um, I did add these white emblems on the wheel, which kind of match, color match the car, which is pretty nice. I also added the Tesla um, valve stem covers. Okay, my wife is driving, and we're driving down to Lake City to go to a supercharger, and it is Christmas Day, so. Why not try Santa mode? Every time you hit the turn signal, it will we'll go ahead and uh, and go ahead and play those bells. But it used to be the cars were reindeer, but in a recent update, now that they have the cars as uh, you can actually see what type of car is next to you, you you don't see reindeer for the cars anymore. But it's kind of cool. You see snow falling and the little. Uh, Santa going, it's pretty cool. Okay, so we're trying to stop at a supercharger, but I wanna check my my limit. Our last time we stopped was at uh, Tifton, Georgia, and we did not get charged. We were supposed to get charged, but we never got charged for, for that, or when we stopped at uh, another supercharger before. So I don't know why the first time supercharging your Tesla Model 3, you're not getting charged, but uh, they're supposed to charge, they aren't. So you wanna set your your level to the trip meter, you want to set that to from 100% to 90%. You never want to charge up to 100%, we were told, at a supercharger if, if you don't need the range. So I set it to 90, and let's go ahead and see about supercharging. The Tesla supercharger right here in Tifton. The charging cable for this is so much thicker than the one at the house, so this is like you don't get much slack in this. It's very, very uh, short distance. So when you're when you're charging, you've got to be very, very close. So you always have to back in with the Tesla model. Okay, so I am here and looking at the supercharging. I can see I've got 25 minutes remaining on my supercharging. And if I go ahead and click that, I see some data on the supercharging and the nearby superchargers. So looks pretty good. I can see my line here shows I'm stopping at 90%. Okay, so I just got notification that the supercharging is almost complete and the battery's at 80%. Idle fees may apply after charging is completed. So that means if you don't go ahead and leave when it's fully charged, you're gonna get an idle fee of, of close to a dollar a minute. So it's 50 cents if it's not busy, but if it's a dollar, if it's peak time. So you do wanna get out of there. So I got it on my Apple Watch and on my phone, so it's pretty cool. Okay, charging is complete at 279 miles. It actually, that is 90%. So 279 miles is 90%, 310 miles on the long range battery is 100%. I'm only charging to 90%, which is recommended. I don't need a hundred, I don't need 310 miles for my range. So it took exactly 43 minutes and not, uh, not anymore, but it, they said it was 40 minutes. So uh, we missed it by three minutes. Other than that, with intolerance, Let's get going. Okay, so I want to show that I'm on uh, I'm on autopilot right now. You can see this uh, blue steering wheel. That's that lights up when you're on autopilot. If you're not on autopilot, if you hit the stock down once, you're on just straight cruise control, and it's adaptive cruise control. You can go ahead and uh, if you if this car in front of you, it'll slow down. If that car slows down, so if you use the scroll wheel here and you scroll down once, you go down five miles. You go up you go up five miles an hour so that's really cool and if you want to go autopilot you double tap and you don't even have to put push, push it down hard it just works automatically if you just double tap and you'll see that little steering wheel icon that shows that you're on autopilot 
So the new feature that they have now is that it will take an exit for you and it will also change lanes for you with autopilot. And that's called navigation on autopilot. So navigate on autopilot is where it will actually, you'll see everything change to one line and you can actually make the lane changes. It'll make, it'll suggest lane changes for you. And so if I want to go ahead and make a lane change, I just put the turn signal on. It'll see if I'm clear in the lane and it will actually move into that lane and slow down if necessary, which it did because I'm in front of somebody right now. Somebody's in front of me right now. So that is really cool. And if I want to take off, navigate on autopilot, I can do that just by hitting that. And now we've got the two lanes, which will just keep you in in the lane, but it won't suggest any lane change. It'll, it won't suggest any lane changes or take an exit for you. If I don't put my hands on the steering wheel, you're gonna notice that it's going to it's gonna show blue up here and it's gonna ask me to put my hands on the wheel. Okay, so you see here it says apply light force to steering wheel and you see blue happening up here. That means that it wants me to put my hands on the steering wheel. It does not have capacitive touch so it doesn't know that your hand is on the wheel. It's using kind of as you're moving the wheel, you're going to get that, uh, it's gonna know that your hands are on the wheel at that point. So that is kind of nice. It's suggesting a lane change right here. You can see confirm lane change into faster lane. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I have it navigate on autopilot on, it suggested lane change. I'm gonna have it make the lane change for me. Now it accelerated to 80 miles an hour, which is what I had it set for. And that's all you have to do. It will guide you to the next lane. Eventually it will do this automatically, but for right now, it will just suggest the lane change and just go ahead and do it. Now it wants me to go here lane change again it's kind of fun keeps you uh, keeps you on track and you won't miss your exit this way because it will just automatically take an exit for you the camera which shows a 360 view it will actually show the different types of vehicles that are around you so I was right beside a truck and actually showed the shape of a truck I'm beside a car or a motorcycle or a person it will show that person or a cyclist so it's really very interesting on how it actually shows on the map the different vehicles around you. Okay, so if you need to make a lane change and somebody's right there, it will show red until it's able to make that lane change. And then the blinker will shut off by itself. Pretty cool. So coming up behind me is a motorcycle and you're gonna see it's actually showing a motorcycle as the vehicle, which I think is really neat. So it can distinguish people and motorcycles and different cars and trucks. Okay, so we have upcoming lane change. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this lane change just to get into this lane. It's gonna make the next lane change right into the exit. And that's at a half a mile. I'm gonna be taking exit 270. It's gonna make the lane, it's gonna turn on the turn signal, make the lane change automatically. This is Navigate on Autopilot. This is the new feature that came out just recently. And you're gonna see it just happen right now. So here's 270 coming up. And it's going to now turn on the turn signal. You see that? You see the green, which means it's regenerating power as it's slowing down by itself. And it's gonna just guide us in. It should slow us down going into the thing. The thing about this is you need to take over in a little bit. It won't navigate you right through this. So it is slowing you down. You can see your miles per hour slowing down. And now the navigate on autopilot is ending, it says and I had to take over. So there we go. That's navigating autopilot. Okay, so we've talked about the outside a lot. Let's talk about the interior of the car. So if I just go ahead and open it up right here. There we go. Okay, as you can see, the door has soft touch right here and has Alcantara here, which is nice. And so all the high-end cars have Alcantara there. So these doors, definitely have that if you look down here I have the sports pedals and the seats are vegan leather so they're they're a nice touch they actually feel really really good um, I've had leather seats and these feel just as good or better they are actually a little bit softer than the leather seats the steering wheel is very much a that vegan leather and it really really feels good um, as you can see, we've got our 15-inch touchscreen. Right down here is our 
drink holders, which actually hold all standard drinks, and I really have no problems. I really wish they did have something to kind of tighten up on the drinks, but it holds all my drinks just fine. You have this compartment here, which is magnetic, so if you go down and you, uh, it magnetically shuts. So you have to shut it softly. If you shut it too hard, it'll just pop back up. You'll actually get a message on the touchscreen that it says, close lid gently, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, so anyway, you can see down here we have you can put your cell phones in here and you could put either Android or Apple connectors in here and that's really nice and we have two USBs underneath I also have a kind of a Y connection with a thumb drive for the dash cam and as you can see the dash cam is lit up up there so I have that hooked up into one of my USB ports if you slide this off you're gonna see that that's where your connectors go for your uh, Apple or iPhone uh, connectors. You're also your Samsungs, uh, and that just slides right back on really easy. You've got your speakers in here. So you've got your uh, one large speaker right there. In the You've got a speaker up on this uh, A-frame right here. That's the A-pillar. You've got another speaker in the A-pillar. This front has a whole speaker in the front, which is really nice. And you've got uh, in the door panels in the back, you're gonna have other speakers. So we have an all wood dash, and this is one piece of wood. It's a veneer wood that goes all the way across, and it's a really nice touch. It really gives, and that's real wood. It actually looks like real wood, feels like real wood, so it's not a plasticky look, which you see in some cars. So up here, you've got your rear view mirror. That's auto dimming with your camera sensors in there as well. Now up here, you have a camera that points to the back. They, this right now is not being used, but it is something that is there. Um, you have your, your hazards right there, so you can turn on your hazards right there. Or you can go ahead and these are your mics for your Bluetooth. The lights auto dim when they go on or off, which is really nice LED lights. Okay, coming down, we've got our visor right here. And what's really nice about this is it can come down halfway or full way, and the light will come on right there. So it's kind of neat how it comes down like that. So it's just a little interesting that way. All right, and then of course our panoramic two-paneled roof, which is clear glass. So this is 98% UV protectant. So there's no heat that comes in here. So you're gonna be looking straight out. You can look straight out at the sun or the clouds and it doesn't even hurt your eyes. So there's really no heat that comes in from here. So that's kind of nice. Uh, again, your cup holders and the door panel are really nice. And the floor mats are the Tesla floor, floor mats and they come standard with the vehicle. Okay, so the center console has the nice armrest right there, and that is the soft touch uh, vegan leather. And you've got a little tray in here, and ample storage goes down here. In here, we also have our uh, t uh, 12 volt uh, connector right there, so that's where you can plug that in, and you got plenty of storage. Okay, moving on to the back, you can see that we have Alcantara right here, soft touch. Moving on, we've got the vegan leather seats. It's a 60-40 split seat that goes down, which is quite nice, so you can put those down. And that goes down pretty flat. Um, you can see that you do not have a, a hump in the middle, so that is really great. That's due to it not having an axle. You've got your two USB ports, so what's really nice is you've got plenty of room in here. So if uh, I'm sitting down, and I've got plenty of room from my legs going down. So it's really not a problem to sit back here. In fact, you even have more room in the center. You have even more room where your feet go if you sit in the center. So you got even more leg room. Of course you have your magazine holders right in the back of each chair. Okay, opening up the trunk, look at the ample room that you have in here. Okay, so this trunk is really spacious. So I've got the laser cut model three protector on it, but as you can see on the side, we have a little compartment cubby, which actually holds uh, kind of odds and ends in there. Or you've got this lower compartment, which will is very deep because you've got no engine back there. You can just kind of uh, put two 24 packs of uh, water if you need to. And on the right side, due to the fact that there is a subwoofer 
in this car. This is where the subwoofer is housed. So on the right side, you have this blocked off, so you have no storage on that right side. So the left side has storage, the right side does not. Okay, so this car has summon feature, which is really great. So if you open your app, you can go ahead and click on summon in your app. And what it'll do is it'll open up forward or reverse. So you can take this car and pull out of a parking lot forward or reverse. And this is really helpful if you're in a tight spot or you just want to pull out of your garage. It will turn, you can program it to be in your closed garage, open your garage door with Homelink, and then go ahead and pull itself out and unlock and be ready for you to use. But let's say you're in a parking lot situation. You just want to go ahead and reverse it. You're gonna see the lights come on up front and it will start actually moving back. So there you go. It's actually moving with the car, with just me holding the button. I let go, it'll stop. What's really great is it ha it's using the sensors. It will actually go around. It'll go around an obstacle or it will go ahead and stop for a pedestrian or somebody. So if somebody was to walk in front of the vehicle, right now I'm pulling it forward right now. If I was to walk in front, I'm gonna walk in front of this vehicle will actually stop so it just stopped I was actually holding the button so it's pretty neat it has a lot of safety features but the summon feature is the is one of the greatest things to show off for somebody that hasn't seen a Tesla okay so there you have it you've seen everything that this car can do everything I think I could show you right now there's so much more to this vehicle and I am really truly excited about it if you like my channel please like and share and hit that bell icon it really helps the channel and really helps keep us going so another thing that you can do is i'm able to give away uh free supercharging on certain models of the tesla so if you use my referral code which is john 98574 you can get that and please use it uh contact me i'd be happy to help you get that going through but i can give away free supercharging it also helps the channel out and you're going to plug right into a NEMA 1450 outlet.